Hello, I'm Mr. Swinger One here. Welcome back to the channel. Um, figured I'd do a video. Uh, we're, I was on another person's channel. I won't mention them because I don't know if they want to be mentioned. Um, but you know who you are when if you see this video. We were talking. His video was about the people that restore these cars. The people out there. Um, basically, and he was correct. He's like, hey, you guys are the ones restoring these cars. Uh, so I figured we'd take a look at mine. Um, and kind of, I'm going to talk, we'll come to a conclusion here, but I want to talk about how this car started out and it's not even finished yet. You can see the underhood sort of finished, but it's not correct. But when I got this car, it was an original C7 car, repainted silver. I pulled it out of a field, um, had a vinyl top on it that was peeling off. So that had to go. Um, the underhood was you know rattle can painted black so through the course of my work here we stripped down the underhood redid that we got it cut in with purple i'm gonna end up masking it off and then shooting the body my order of operations is backwards because i'm not in a pro shop like my windows are in it's not i did take the car down to bare metal we got the rust out but i had to have the car start up and moving under its own power so it's not like it was a rotisserie, paint the body, then put it all back together. It's sort of at random. So I put the headliner in this winter. I'm going to have to mask off the door jams and carefully mask everything off when I shoot the paint. But that's not the point here. But the point is getting these cars back to original, what it takes. I mean, let's look at my underhood here. So the first thing you might see, it's a flex hose reason for the flex hose is that is a six cylinder radiator a uh, V8 car will have the water outlet over here so my options there I pulled this out of a junkyard years ago I was young I didn't know the six cylinder versus V8 had the water neck on the wrong side but I don't like the flex hose one of the main reasons is it's kinked right here it kinks now I've ran the car like that, but I want to get a nice decent hose on it, if not the correct radiator. Um, just for better circulation. There should probably be a fan shroud. I don't have one of those. Um, back in the day, the six cylinder radiator, I should have kept the eight. I don't know why I was in my 20s, I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but back then, these cars were in the junkyards. It was assumed that parts would be around forever. We know now that the stuff's drying up. But this radiator was rebuilt, recored, uh, triple core. So this is actually a good radiator. It's just the water outlet's on the wrong side. This, I took this to a radiator shop um, back in the day when people were still rebuilding brass radiators. Um, now they're all plastic and aluminum. I don't even know if radiator shops do anything more than recrimp the tanks and change the seals. But there was a time they would unsolder these tanks, put a new core in, and solder it all back together, pressure test it. So you figure almost 25 years ago, this cost me between two and three hundred dollars to have this rebuilt. So, like I said, it is a good high. It's a extended capacity six-cylinder radiator. It would work for this application. My options now are to try to find a hose that fits. So I ordered a slant hose and it's short. So I could do some research, find a hose. It could be a hose for an F-150 with a six cylinder. As long as it goes over this way, maybe I can trim it to fit or I'm gonna have to get a replacement radiator, preferably original looking. Um, but you know, what's that gonna cost? So. There's number one. Now, getting these cars back to correct. What's it cost? Moving on. The battery hold down is an original. This is an aftermarket battery hold down. The battery is an original style. Um, I do need a new battery tray. We do have our 340 with an aftermarket Edelbrock intake and a 750 Edelbrock performer carburetor. We have Mickey Thompson valve covers that are, what, cast aluminum? Um, I personally like cast aluminum. It seals better than your stamped steel, but it is not correct. Let me see if I can get more light on this. It's not correct. So 
I do have a set of original looking chrome valve covers somewhere. I may throw them on at some point. Um, we have the newer style brake master cylinder. The reason why the old ones leak and eat the paint off the firewall. They go, and it goes down inside and it'll rust the floorboards of the inside of the car. Um, we do have stock 340 manifolds and stock style exhaust. The ignition is a Mopar Performance electronic conversion. So that's not original. This car would have had dual points. Um, this stuff, I don't mind though. I would, would rather run electronic over points. Now, the air cleaner. Aftermarket piece from Mancini has a 72 style decal on it. That's not correct. Um, so where do we go from here? A couple little things. How much would it cost? So. The fuel filter, not stock. The radiator hoses aren't routed properly. They should come over further up onto the fender well. And they have a little loom hanger there. There's a lot of stuff not correct here. So the, the question is how much would you spend to get this car back to original? Um, and will it ever be original? It's going to be restored. It'll be on its third paint job. It's not truly original. Does it matter? Or is it just more for somebody to nitpick? Your car isn't original. It's not worth anything. That all it is is low ballers and tire kickers, American picker types that do that because they want to talk you down from your price and give you a nonsense price for your car and then flip it and make a profit. Um But you know, I'm yammering here. Like, the, the, in my opinion, probably the only original car you'll ever find is like a 75 Dart four door Slant 6. The grandma bought new. She drove it up until the early 90s. Um, and then it sat somewhere in a garage. And you'll be lucky to find a car like that. But those are the cars that are going to be original because these cars, there's something called Day 2. These cars, when new, people modded them. Kind of like, um, I don't know, if I mention Harley Davidson. They're designed where you buy the bike and then you keep going back to the dealer and buying parts. This car has 14 inch rally wheels on, 205 70 14s. Um, small. For the horsepower that the 340 put out in 1970, 275. Some say it was 325. That car, that wheel's going to spin. Um, you need to put more tire on it to actually competitively drag race it. There's, I mean, that wheel would probably spin with a slant six in it. Um, so, point is, these cars were modified. Um, the original air filter, air cleaner, was usually tossed. Um, and that's an open element there. They, maybe you, they ran a little small six inch open element. It was usually the way to go. I'm assuming, because I'll tell you, trying to get an original air cleaner for this car, you're talking seven, eight hundred dollars. So I went and got, I went to Mancini Racing. I got the reproduction, what do they call it? Unsilenced air cleaner. It's not correct for a 70. We're going to take a look at that and what it looks like on the car. Um, with the uh, 340 pie, pie tin, they call it. And the problem with the pie tins are Mopar isn't reproducing them. I think Mopar Performance reproduced them up until a few years ago. So, and there's an orange and red one. The correct one for this car is orange. The red ones are available. So, uh, or well, they were. My, uh, what I ended up doing, I got the unsilenced air cleaner, and I picked up a pie tin off the internet. Some guy had one, he never used it, but it was not, the price was marked up naturally. This is the way it goes when something's not available. Um, but your options are, you know, you can run something like this, and if you don't mind this look, um, but if you want to try to get your engine bay cleaned up looking somewhat as Mopar had it, you're going to spend some money on little nitpicky stuff. Like, I should probably get new heater hoses longer and route them over to the wheel well. A little, you know, try to make it look... It'll never be original, but I can make it appear original. Um, another thing... I do have a 72 trapdoor air cleaner here. You know, it isn't like I had to buy... 
correct air cleaner, but this is not correct for 70. This is the air cleaner. There's the trap door. This is the air cleaner that goes on your uh, thermoquad. So it would go with the spread bore intake cast iron and the uh, thermoquad carburetor. So thermoquad's a spread bore, you need at least that intake. I have that whole setup somewhere, it's just not correct for this year car. Um, we're going to take a look at this uh, unsilenced air cleaner, what that looks like on the engine. We'll talk a little bit more. Okay, so what we have here is the Mancini unsilenced air cleaner. Um, it draws the air in around the edges underneath. Um, it is not correct for this car, but it's closer to, um, you know, what was on the 70. The 70 air cleaner had two openings, one like here and one here. Had a little yellow sticker on the side. Um, so the I can get an original 70 air cleaner the correct one for this car for I googled it comes up around seven or eight hundred bucks sometimes nine hundred this here came in at about half that about 350 till I got everything the Pi 10 was the most expensive part um, the reason why is because right now they're not available they're not making them anymore so people are marking them up I'm not complaining about what I paid for this setup, but if you know what those Pythons were going for versus paying a couple hundred for one now, it gets a little, it's a little ouch. So you're like, oh, well, did I really need it? No, I had an open element chrome one. But I eventually want to detail this. Um, the paint on the engine is kind of old. At some point, I'll either pull the engine and repaint it, or I'll just touch it up as best I can in the car. But I'll probably pull it, because I don't want to overspray anything. Get rid of that flex hose. A couple other little details. Get it original appearing, as close as possible, and what's affordable. It's, it all comes down to how much you want to spend on little details. Um, but to sit around and nitpick the little details, when... You know, in my opinion, the only original car you're going to find, they're just not out there. I mean, not a high-performance car. Um, because they were bought, this car was beat. When I when I got it, this car was drug out of a field. The 340 was long gone. There was a 318 two-barrel in here. The four-speed on back was still there. The body was rough. Um, it's just the truth of it. It's like in 2023 to nitpick a car for what it is versus what it should be um, and what a good car that's restored 100% correct goes for like your average guy isn't going to have it in my opinion um, not a guy who's working with a wife two kids um, that's another thing trying to dump money into one of these cars when you're raising a family um, that becomes a challenge so you got to cover it you got to make the money whatever you do for a living you got to keep the family happy um, <laughs> I've known guys that would hide it for their wife. They'd be spending money in their car, but eventually the wife finds out, you know, this is just little things that go along with it. I've been fortunate. Um, my wife was always like, as long as the bills are paid, you know, don't spend all your money in your car and then come crying. You don't have money to pay the bills, which I've been fortunate. I've never been in that situation, but it's taken me a long time to get my car painted <laughs> for that reason. Um, but this is just what it is, my side of it, my story, um, not, not everybody's story, but I do think that's why you see a lot of rat rod builds because guys are getting them running, but they don't have the money to take them all the way or the patience. Like I said, I've owned this car 30 years. I haven't been working on it 30 years. I've the first 10 years I owned it. I drove it, you know, maybe half the time, but it, it looked like crap. It was, a uh, primered up car with rust bubbling through the quarters um 
I got tired of the way it looked. I decided to, you know, repaint it and, you know, do the engine bay, do the trunk. I mean, it would have been easy to just sand the outside down with Bondo and shoot it with single stage paint, but we went a little further with it than that. Anyway, I hope I've made my point here. I, I was going to try and script this out, but I, uh, I do better talking off the cuff. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Um, but yeah, this is what it is. Collecting parts in the end. Little details are what's going to top off a nice, uh, I'll call semi-restoration. Because I don't want to even claim to be a restorer that even knows what he's doing. But we are figuring it out and we are slowly getting there. Thanks for watching.